we should count it down a little? Can we get up here? You can. Yep. On the count of three, everyone count with us. One, two, three. that that really needed to be the, in the center of the quilt. Because really, when you look at White Point, when you come to White Point, the fireplace is, uh, has been, and I think always will be, the heart of White Point. So that certainly needed to go right uh, in the center of the quilt. Uh, with the, 13, the other 12 themes that, were, um, uh, that we decided on, the common theme that certainly ran through uh, was the bunnies. Our, that was the one that uh, so many people, almost everybody who sent their information in, who shared their thoughts, uh, definitely wanted to see a bunny block here. So as you can see, there is the bunny block over on the right-hand side, the second one down, um, playing in the garden. They're, they're playing on a piece of fabric called Garden Song, which just seemed to absolutely fit for that particular block. They're uh, trying to just nibble on the, the roses that are there because Wendy the gardener, and I don't know if Wendy's here today, but Wendy said that they uh, are little pests when it comes to eating <laughs> the roses and, and the, the uh, rosebuds. If we're coming down along, uh, right below that, you're going to see the boathouse. And the boathouse is, uh, ha is and has been a part of White Point for a long period of time. Interestingly enough, and I didn't notice until I read the book, Destination White Point, um, that there, there was a dance hall there. Uh, that's where the, all the dances were held in that particular uh, uh, building. One of the things that I always kept handy with me when I was working on this particular quilt was my camera because I wanted to make sure that when I was doing a building or when I was doing uh, a chair or um, whatever object it was that I could use that particular photograph that I had chosen and get the proper perspective uh, from those. So my camera was my second best friend, along with my sewing machine. Coming down uh, right below the boathouse, you're going to see uh, the celebrations block. Now, many people um, talked, uh, or not talked, but shared their stories about weddings, uh, about all of the different celebrations that happen at White Point. Uh, so I wanted to encapsulate all of the things there with some common themes. Um, you're going to see, uh, you may, some of you may not be able to see, but right down on, on the uh, right hand side, lower right on that particular block, with wedding rings, we have some lace, we have old, new, borrowed and blue in this particular block, and I'll explain those in just a second. Um, but with celebrations, not only with weddings, you always have flowers and you almost always have gifts. So uh, you see those there as well. With the, in the uh, uh, surrounding the, um, the rings, we've got some lace there. And part of the lace is, represents the old, and that's from Alicia Risley's uh, wedding gown. And thank you very much, Alicia, for donating that for us. Um, and the borrowed, is also some lace there from Phaedra Charlton Huskins, where's Phaedra, there's Phaedra right over there. Uh, she um, trimmed some of the lace off her wedding gown as well. Phaedra moved here from Montreal, uh, met and married Jamie, and was married here at White Point, and she willingly shared that particular uh, uh, treasure with us as well. And then we have the blue, which is the blue gift box, and the flowers at the top. So we have the old, new, the board, and blue all encapsulated into that. Now you're going to see just at the upper right hand corner of that uh, another little, thanks Donna, uh, this is um, the tartan that the Risley family um, adheres to. I believe it's the Campbell tartan? Campbell tartan, sorry. Uh, and if you see Robert at some point in time, with his uh, kilt and his stockings on, and one stocking is not up quite as far as it should be, it's because the little ribbon was from the garter on his stocking. So thank you, Robert, for sharing that as well. 
And you'll see when you come up close too that there's a little small maple leaf button in the center of that. Uh, on the very bottom, this is a nighttime bonfire at the beach. Pretty well self-explanatory there. And the Adirondack chairs that I created were uh, created from a picture that I had taken of the Adirondack chairs here at White Point. Then we have the pool in the center, which again is pretty much self-explanatory. And you'll see little bits of whimsy uh, along the way here. And, and my one uh, uh, bit of whimsy in there is the little floaty that's in the pool. I always like to have a little bit of whimsy here and there. It's just fun. I don't know if any of you were looking out the windows today or not, but did you see any surfers out there? They look much warmer on here, don't you think? Um, surfing is becoming very popular in this area, and it's certainly becoming a popular sport at, uh, at White Point. Then we have um, fun at the beach. And I'm sure there are many of you in the room who have uh, been here and had fun at the beach regardless of, uh, uh, of the age. It doesn't matter. You can take your bucket and shovel down there and have a grand time. I think there's something coming up next weekend, uh, perhaps. So, uh, and golf. How many golfers are in the room? Excellent. Good. One thing I, I don't know if Donna mentioned or not, but when we were going around to uh, the stitching parties and the quilting parties, uh, there was always, I was there, and then there was always a representative from White Point. Donna uh, accompanied me on a number of occasions. Uh, Alana Hurdle, I'm not sure if Alana's here today or not. Pam Miles, Pam came along. When it came, when it came time to do the, uh, the golfing block, <coughs> Danny Morton was the guy who was nominated to uh, be there at that time. And Danny was an absolute champion because he made sure that the men and the women, before they went into the golf meeting, they were going to get their stitch in that quilt. So. Thank you very much, all you golfers, and I see uh, Mr. Dexter over there and all kinds of different uh, gentlemen here who were just so gracious and had so much fun putting their quilts in, as, or their stitches in as well. And we have the food block, and this is a tribute to Chef Allen and to uh, Sommelier Dan. Um, Chef Allen, I needed some inspiration for this, uh, this particular block. I worked on two at a time, usually, and when, when two were done, then I walked along or started working on the next one. But this was one of the last ones that I did because it just couldn't quite figure out what exactly I was going to put in that particular block. And whenever I needed inspiration, Donna was always there for me, sending me a picture or sending me uh, a little story or a bit of information. In this particular case, she sent me a video that I believe is on the website. And it was uh, of um, salmon, a uh, planking salmon on the beach uh, with some wine. And look, it was, it was just an absolutely wonderful little video. And it just inspired me to create the planked salmon, the bottle of wine, sitting on a nice linen tablecloth and just looking out over the ocean, much as uh, many of us have, have done today. And, and I was very happy with the, uh, the overall result in that one. Um, the cabins at the top, again, uh, my trusty camera, I took some pictures and made sure that I, I got uh, what I wanted to get and was able to work from those, those pictures. Um, and I don't know if you can see from where you're sitting or not, but just above the check-in sign, there's just some little bunny ears. It's another little bit of whimsy that I like to add. <coughs> it's really, when you think about it, White Point is all about fun, isn't it? Isn't it an absolutely wonderful spot? What do you gals and guys all think of this resort? Is it not beautiful? Let's have a round of applause. For everything that the rest of us The next one in the center top is the uh, uh, watching the lobster boats at sunrise. Uh, and that uh, is something that came through loud and clear from the folks who sent their, their ideas in. Um, <clears throat> you'll see when you come up close that uh, we've got one boat that's going out to the lobster buoys. And then we have another boat up on the horizon that's coming back in again. Now, I had a tremendously difficult time trying to get that boat look just right. I, 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 the first time I tried it, it looked a little bit like a tanker. Well, I didn't think that we had too many tankers in the bay. So I thought that that better not be utilized. So it didn't seem to matter what I tried. It didn't work. So I have to very much thank my husband. And I'm not sure where he is. He's somewhere in the 
audience there, uh, for drawing a little boat for me. So I consider that to be Wayne's boat that's coming back in with a load of lobsters. So. <laughs> and then over on the uh, top right hand side, that's the old main lodge. That's what it looked like. That's my interpretation of what it looked like. Uh, and I worked from a picture also with that one. Now as I mentioned before, I worked on two blocks at a time. Um, and it, it just, if that way you can kind of go from one block to another and just back again depending on where your inspiration happened to be at that particular day. Uh, but when I, I, I was shopping one day for some fabric, any of you quilters know in the audience how difficult that is to shop for fabric. We love to shop for fabric. But I wasn't shopping for fabric for that particular block. But there was that piece of fabric that's in the background that just fairly jumped off the shelf at me. And I just kept going back to it and going back to it and I, I just knew that that particular fabric had to be in the background for the old main. It just said exactly what I felt it needed to say uh, for that old main lodge. Um, the center block, the fireplace. As I mentioned before, the heart of White Point. Now, when the lodge uh, burned a year ago, the one thing that was left standing like a big sentinel was that fireplace right up through the, the center of uh, the sky, basically. And so that's why I felt that that uh, fireplace needed to go right up through the center of the quilt. And I'm very happy with the actual result. When we started with these stitching parties, and just as a little bit of history, we all think of, um, in today's world, when we think of a quilting, people quilting, we think of a quilting bee. That's the term that's generally used. But according to Scott Robson's book, Old Nova Scotia Quilts, uh, back in the day, quiltings were quiltings. A quilt, what we think of today as a quilting bee was then called either a quilting or a quilting party. So that's why we used that name. Now this particular quilt, uh, as Donna mentioned, has traveled almost or maybe over 5,000 kilometers. So it's very unique in that way. What we did was we took the blocks, as the blocks were constructed, not the whole quilt obviously, uh, and people added their stitches to each individual block. We went to the fire hall and we uh, had all the firemen add their stitches. We had uh, people from as young as three to as old as 90 put their stitches in this quilt in one form or another. We probably had as many men as we had women add their stitches. And as Donna mentioned, we gathered so many stories. So this quilt really is, um, it's a story quilt. If you come and look at it, you will hear the stories. You can listen to the stories that it's telling you. And almost everybody will see something that triggers a memory uh, in their lives. Quilts have a way of doing that, I find. They, they just, as soon as you mention quilt in any of these stitching parties that we went to, people started to um, think in a little different way and would tell you some of the most interesting stories uh, along the way. Um, the White Point logo is there. We've got the Nova Scotia flag there. We have the Nova Scotia tartan there, which is a beautiful tartan. Uh, we have the screen at White Point, a little bit of fabric on the inside there. One of my friends wasn't able to come to any of the stitching parties, but she really wanted to be part of this, so she sent me down some fabric, which I used for the logs that are inside the, uh, um, the screen. And she's my friend Carolyn, who's right over there. Um, and then uh, I really wanted to get um, the Canada flag in there, but it just didn't seem to fit anywhere. So I, I really um, was very happy with the maple leaf um, just sort of floating down. To me, it looks like it's just sort of gently caressing that, that uh, fireplace there. And last, after all of these blocks were done, and we had, I think, how many stitching parties did we have, Donna? 24. 24. 24. 24 stitching parties in all different places. I'm sure there were a lot of firsts in this quilt. I'm sure it was the first stitching party to ever happen on the waterfront in Halifax, and that was uh, uh, during Tall Ships. 
Um, we went to Saltscapes in Toronto, and very likely it was the first stitching party that was ever to have happened on the waterfront in Toronto. And that was just uh, an absolutely wonderful time. It was, uh, so many people came, and they put their stitches in, and they were expats from Nova Scotia, or from Newfoundland, or from wherever, and they, they were so excited to be able to just sit for a few minutes and put that stitch in. There were many people who had never threaded a needle before. Now that was a lot of fun, I can tell you. <laughs> they thought I was brilliant when I could show them how to thread a needle. Um, there were um, people from all over the world that added their stitches as far away as China, as Donna mentioned. Um, Australia, I was looking through the book and there was uh, someone from Australia, somebody from Sweden, uh, England, and all over Canada and the US. Our youngest stitcher was three. three years old. Three years old. I wonder what story he's telling today, because I'm pretty sure it was a little boy. Um, the other thing that we were able to do during this whole process, because it generated a lot of interest, uh, we were able to introduce uh, stitching, quilting, to another generation. We had a couple of uh, stitching parties where we incorporated uh, some, of, some little blocks uh, that we encouraged the kids to come and do make their own bunny block and that was a takeaway that they could uh, take with them when they went home and oh my goodness they had so much fun I have a picture here this is one of one of my favorite pictures all the way along this was at uh, one of the stitching parties and I'll leave it here and you folks can have a look at it it was at the fire hall when we were um, we were there inviting people to come and have their breakfast support the local firemen also put their stitch in the fireplace uh, and we incorporated a little project for the kids. This was again the bunny block. And you'll see that all of the little ones that are here surrounding me in this one, they're all boys. They all have their little block. They're looking so happy. And they are having an absolutely wonderful time. And honestly, this is just one of the, the most amazing things that happens uh, when, when quilts are involved. The other thing that I'm going to mention is just um, how it was constructed, what's going around the outside. Um, <clears throat> wasn't sure just exactly after I got the, the centerpiece together how I was going to incorporate all this. So uh, in the end, uh, this is uh, a lovely piece of fabric that has flowers. Uh, it might even be mistletoe, although I'm not quite sure. I just love the color and the uh, um, the design in it and it worked in really well because when we were actually quilting when we were doing the quilting process and that happened at Lakeside Hall that was after the blocks were all constructed everybody had added their uh, uh, their stitch in our mobile stitching parties because that's what I started to call them was our mobile stitching parties when the top was constructed and it was now stationary wasn't going anywhere it was in the frame in the quilting frame where are you Lynn? And she is over there. Lynn was the, uh, the person in charge of getting it nice and straight and organized in the quilting frame. Um, we had this all organized. This border all the way around side became the bunny trail. People really, all of the ladies uh, and, and the gentlemen really enjoyed putting their stitch in the bunny trail. And as Donna alluded to, uh, when we first talked about this, I thought, oh dear, how am I going to ever manage having all kinds of people with all kinds of stitches putting their stitches in this particular quilt? But I quickly learned that just like the bunnies, the bunnies have different sized feet, the bunnies go in different directions, and the bunnies are all important, and it's all about telling the story. It really is all about the story, this particular uh, quilt. Um, I would like very much to give my undying gratitude to Donna Hanna, who was always there for me, always there with guidance. It was, this was Donna's uh, uh, vision, uh, and I just think it's an absolutely brilliant um, way of, of stitching a community together, keeping a community together, keeping the information uh, about this, this wonderful spot. Um, and so thank you very much, Donna, and please, a great round of applause for Donna. It's home. Did we talk about the
I forgot about the bars. The bars. As you'll notice, this is uh, framed in a little different way than many quilts are hung. Uh, these are the original quilt bars, the quilt frame, that was used in the first white point quilt, which was about 30 years old. Uh, the, this um, quilt here, stitching white pointers together, also was quilted in the same frame. It was quilted over at Lakeside Hall. We had 11 uh, quilting parties over there. There were over 70 people who came. Thank you very much. I see some wonderful faces in here uh, this afternoon uh, who came and spent several hours sitting, stitching, putting their, uh, their quilting stitches in. This is the same, uh, these are the same bars uh, framed by National Art in Halifax. Uh, we use these uh, clamps also to keep the uh, frame straight for doing your actual uh, quilting. Um, and the, the clamps actually came from my family farm in Prince Edward Island. They would have been my grandmother's. They probably were, maybe they were a generation beyond that, but I think that they would have been hand forged. And we, we use these when we're actually clamping the, uh, um, the quilt frame together. So what do you think? It's a different way of, of, uh, of uh, framing it, but I think it's absolutely wonderful. This is something new that not uh, uh, that that uh, is going to be happening. But um, Quilt Canada, which is a national organization, uh, and has a publication that comes out four times a year, I believe, uh, are going to be featuring a story about the White Point quilt in their upcoming publication. Um, so that's kind of exciting. Where will it hang, Donna? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good. The quilt, uh, we, we were having difficulties in this new lodge to figure out where would be the best place to hang this. Um, unlike the old one, apparently I'm not allowed to throw it in the washer, <laughs> nor dryer. Uh, <laughs> so, and we also were, we needed to be respectful of the impact light would have on it. And we wanted a nice quiet spot where people could reflect on the quilt, appreciate the artwork that's in it, and in a space that would allow and support that. So many of you, I saw you milling around, were on your way up to the crow's nest earlier. If you head up on the first landing of heading towards the crow's nest, there's a wall there that has limited amount of light, perfect quiet space for reflecting and appreciating. So the white point quilt, will be hung in its final location at that uh, at that location just going up the stairwell so i expect to see a few of you sitting up there meandering and thinking <laughs> along the way as i know we will as well but it will be a nice quiet spot to be able to do that okay thank you very much everybody and by all means come and, and have a closer look thank you donna thank you danny thank you everyone for being a part of this is very special terrific now going through this process. Danny is going to step forward. Um, while he's bringing a, a little token of our appreciation for you, Bev, I also wanted to make sure that you all realize that Bev was presented with a giant... It's all right, it's just a quilt. The old one. Bev was presented with the Diamond Jubilee Award by Premier Daryl Dexter earlier this year because of her vision, her assistance, and being such an amazing champion. So. Thank you for that, and it was an amazing award. Our presentation to you may not be as glamorous as that, but I can tell you it's uh, more heartfelt. And uh, we'd like to invite you to, we wanted to give her a piece of white point clothing, but it's what's on the inside that counts the most. So she's just going to unzip the jacket. We figured there'd be some separation anxiety with the quilt. <laughs> Of course, and 
need a break. I'll take that in your way for you. You're over now. Thank you. For all of you who are here as well, we wanted to make sure that you all had a piece to take home. We've got yo-yos. Does anybody know what the yo-yos are? Yeah. Bev created the yo-yos from the scrap pieces of our white point quilt. So we still have a variety of those here. But we also have, we did invite you each to not go away without your own note card. So we've got your note cards. And on the back, we wanted to ensure that anybody that received these note cards in the future, whether they be white point guests or your friends, uh, on the very back it has the white point quilt, stitching white pointers together, inspired by white pointers created by fabric and quilt artist Bev Kroos, revealed January 13th, 2012. So please, don't leave without your note card, okay? So that concludes, that concludes the presentation. Thank you so much for being here to be a part of our experience today. If you'd like to step forward and get a photo of yourself with your quilt that you stitched, please do. There are still refreshments in the back, coffee, tea, some lemonade, I believe, and cookies. Please, the afternoon's just begun. For those of you who joined us for brunch, thank you. Having you here has meant so much to all of us and for your contribution. So